Welcome to TFT Central. Today we're going to take you through the best settings for the ASUS RAG Swift PG27 AQN. We'll show you how to get this set up for SDR and HDR modes and a range of different uses, whether that's desktop and normal office applications or for gaming. So we're going to open the main menu and the first thing we're going to do is actually come down to the system setup section and check that the power setting has been set to standard. When you first enable the screen or try and access this menu, it will probably prompt you to switch between these two modes. So just check that you're running in standard mode, which will give you full access to the brightness range of the screen. The other things you may want to change here would be the auto SDR brightness. We're going to leave that turned off for now, but if you want the screen to dynamically control the brightness depending on your room conditions and your ambient lighting, then you can enable this setting and it will activate the ambient light sensor that's built into the top of the screen. We're also just going to turn off the HDR warning message here because that's annoying when you switch HDR mode on. It just warns you about changing settings and that kind of thing. Everything else in this section can be left as it is. And we're going to come back up now. We're going to start with the gaming section. This is nice and simple. So we're going to leave OD or overdrive set to normal. So that is the optimal mode, whether it's for a fixed refresh rate or for external input devices or even for VRR situations. Just make sure you've updated to the latest firmware that is available on the ASUS product website. That will give you much better performance for uh, the overdrive in all modes. Game Plus, you can turn any of these features on that you might want, like the FPS counter and crosshairs and things. We're going to leave those off for now. You can really configure any of the preset modes. We're just going to leave it on the default racing mode and configure that to our liking. That's nice and simple. Dark Boost, we're going to leave it turned off for now, but if you are playing any particularly dark games or you find your the detail in darker scenes needs to be improved a bit, then you can turn that up by all means. It, it will alter your black depth a little bit, but it, it might be useful to some people. So that's the gaming section. So the image section is where we're going to make a few changes. We're going to change, first of all, the brightness. We're going to lower this down to a setting of 16. So that will return us a luminance around 120 nits. Just adjust this to whatever your preference is, depending on your room lighting, the, you know what you're using the screen for and anything else. It doesn't really matter. We're just going to set this to 120, which we find comfortable in our office. Contrast you can leave as it is. Variable backlight, we're going to turn this off for SDR and general usage. I don't really want the local dimming being activated then. It's not a particularly high-end local dimming backlight anyway. So we're going to leave that turned off for SDR mode for now. Blue light, we're going to leave that at level zero. But if you are using the screen at night time or for lots of text work or reading or whatever, you can in increase that setting if you want and then just turn it off again at the end. We found the level four setting to be too yellow and too warm. The other modes were a bit more subtle and minimal in adjustment. So have an experiment if you want to use any of those for reading or at night time or anything. So the display color space, this will let you switch between SDR, sRGB gamut and the wide gamut mode. So the sRGB mode will give you the most accurate performance for typical desktop and SDR content. But if you prefer the more vivid and saturated appearance of the wide gamut mode, then by all means just switch to that mode for your games, for your video, even if it's just SDR content that isn't necessarily designed to be run wide gamut or mastered in that kind of color space. You can do so if you prefer the appearance. So thankfully, it's a nice simple switch between sRGB and wide gamut here, just on the monitor. You don't really need to change anything else in the settings, so you can just quickly and easily switch between the two modes. So sRGB, if you want more accuracy or you're using it for office applications and that kind of thing. Wide gamut mode, if you want a more vivid and saturated appearance, perhaps for games or videos. So that is the image section complete. In the color section, the, the default color space should be set to 6,500K. Now, that is actually very close to the D65 white point that we want, so we'd recommend just leaving it on that setting. You can go into the user mode and fiddle around with the RGB channels to correct it slightly, but we found that it reduced the contrast ratio by a, a fair amount, and, and it's probably not of any real value. So leave this on 6,500K. 
Gamma you can leave on 2.2, that's fine, that's the closest to the 2.2 gamma curve we want, and you can leave the, uh, the setting enabled, that's fine as well. So that is it for SDR usage, and you can just quickly and easily switch between the um, color, the color space which is in the image menu, like I say, if you want to switch between sRGB and wide gamut modes. The only other thing you may want to enable for games would be the NVIDIA ULMB2 setting. So that's a simple on-off toggle, and that will activate the blur reduction backlight. Now you don't want to enable that for static usage, office or anything like that, only enable it for dynamic content like games if you want to improve the motion clarity and if you like that kind of setting. If you do enable it and you find the screen too bright, it does reach around 270 nits with this enabled, use this ULMB2 pulse width setting. Just lower that to your liking, whatever you like, but it will lower the screen brightness and also give you some minor improvements to motion clarity at the same time. So that's the best way to alter the screen brightness if you're using ULMB2 mode. It will remember that for the future as well when you turn it on and off, so that's nice and easy. We're also going to set up HDR mode quickly as well. So we've enabled HDR in Windows and you can see in the top right hand corner of the on-screen display it now says HDR on. There aren't as many settings to change in here so you can still enable ULMB2 for HDR gaming if you like. We're going to leave overdrive on normal and everything else in there. The same recommendations apply as earlier. You'll see that the brightness adjustment is now not available. Contrast we can leave it 50. Variable backlight has a separate control when in HDR mode, so you'll want to leave that turned on to one of the settings. Um, this will control the local dimming and that will give you the small boost in contrast ratio and HDR performance. Have an experiment between the three settings to see which one you prefer in action. Level 2 is the default, that's probably going to be fine for most people. Um, but if you find some of the transitions a bit jarring or too fast or too slow, then you can switch between the other modes to experiment. There's no, not really any other settings to change in this image section. Color, we're going to leave the color temp at 6500K again. That is very close to D65 white point, so that's ideal for HDR content. And there's not really any other settings to change. We've already turned off the HDR warning message, which will just disable a an annoying pop-up that tells you about, you know, if you change these settings when in HDR mode, you might change the setup, but of course that's what we're trying to do anyway. So everything else can be left as it is, and that is HDR mode. If you found this video useful, please give us a like or subscribe for future updates from TFT Central. Any questions, please let us know in the comments below. We'll see you next time.